Hey, this is Mr. Mabry, and we're going to take some notes on the properties of materials. You'll need your science notebook to write this, and you're going to need to make this grid right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start talking, but feel free at any point to stop the video and to copy down what I'm saying. Um, especially if I don't copy down in text, maybe I have great ideas to go here or here. Um, just through the audio and it'd be wise to jot that stuff down too. Now you should have already filled out this column right here with your best understanding of what these words mean. So I'm assuming you've already done this and now we're going to go back through and try to correct it with my definitions over here. You may have already come up with some examples and non-examples as well. We'll try to squeeze in one or two um, examples of my own that I give you during these notes. So let's start with density. My definition with density is density is mass divided by volume. Now there's a lot of things we're going to do with density of this unit, but it's real important that you remember this formula. And a lot of people miss this question on our pre-survey at the start of this unit. So to help you remember this, I have this fun picture I'm going to put in here that I'm going to encourage you to draw the old heart with a slash through it. So you got mass on top and volume. So remember density is the romance killer. And that's density. An example of some material that's dense is like a lead bar. That's pretty dense. And something that wouldn't be as dense is something that's large and fluffy. You know, maybe like a styrofoam block or a feather, you know, or something like that. Let's move on. Magnetism means magnetic. And if we need to say anything else, we are in trouble. So let's not. And you know, magnetic stuff is like iron and different types of metal. Non-magnetic stuff is stuff made of plastic, clothes. There's a whole host of stuff. Let's move on. Soluble. Our key word for soluble is dissolves, which is spelled like this. You know, it's stuff like Kool-Aid or Gatorade or a lot of different powders. That's all our good stuff that dissolves. Stuff that doesn't dissolve, maybe this would be like salt in water. Um, this would be like large, heavy molecules. And I'm going to pause real quick and figure out why my screen is formatting really funky. Hold on. All right, I think that's a little better. Except I've misspelled plastic. All right, let's talk about the word viscous. Viscous is a really cool word. It sounds like vicious. But what it means is... To be viscous is means you have really thick flow. You are resistant to being poured. And this usually is in reference to a liquid being viscous. So this would be stuff like syrup or peanut butter. Because you know that stuff is just, it's really thick when you're pouring the, the you know, if this was syrup, I'm like, oh, pouring the syrup is like slow drip, that's pretty viscous. So the opposite of this would be things like water, which flows really easy, viscous. All right, now we've got a new grid. You may want to pause and copy in this grid, leaving two blanks. And let's start with the word malleable. Now our million, let's go ahead and highlight all this in red. There we go. Our definition for malleable is a mallet. This is the ability to be shaped by pounding on it. So if I can take you and I can smash and hit it and it will like start to form into something. So this is like what a lot of soft metals are. They're very malleable. Um, and notice M for mallet, M for malleable. They go together. A good non-example of this would be like a brick. I can pound a brick, but if I pound a brick it's just going to crack and break. So it is not malleable. Now let's talk about ductile. Our one word for ductile is wire. It is the ability to be stretched out. So if something in this, for example, would be like copper. And again, a lot of metal can be ductile. So if I can take something and stretch it out into a wire, if I can flex it out, we would say that it has the property of ductility or being ductile. A good non-example would be plastic. I can stretch plastic all I want, but it's not going to stretch into wires. It's just going to look at me and say, what are you doing? I'm not duck. Don't leave me alone. All right, let's go to hardness. Now, hardness is a pretty simple one. You guys have all used that word before. Hardness, our one word is about a substance being tough. Resistance to being deformed or bent. 
And the mental picture for hardness is again the idea of like a brick. I'm going to pound on that brick and it's not going to be shaped and it's going to be real hard. And so, and the opposite would be true, like a soft metal. So you guys see this right here, this guy right here, who I'll highlight maybe in like, oh, let's highlight him in a green. And these guys, these are sort of the opposite of each other. If I can shape you, you're probably not hard. If you're hard, I probably can't shape you. Antithesis of each other. All right, let's talk brittle. Brittle, the key word there is break. It is the absence of being ductile or hard. It is also synonymous with the word fragile. So brittle stuff would be like ceramics are brittle or glass. Ceramics or glass is brittle. A non-example would be things like metals or plastic because when you hit them they don't break, they don't shatter. Ooh, shatter. Let's put shatter in there. That's another good word for brittle. All right, let's talk elastic. Keyword for elastic is absorb. To be elastic is to absorb the force and flex. Absorb the force and flex and be able to, quote, bounce back when a stress is removed. Okay, let's think. Classic example is your elastic rubber band. So, oh, force, bounce back. Uh, bounce back. Um, uh, oh, bounce back. Okay. If I pound this Diet Coke can, which I won't because it's full, but if I'm to pound it, this thing isn't going to bounce back. It's going to stay dented in, not elastic. Which brings us to our good buddy. So, here we go. Diet Coke, can, not elastic. Rubber band, pretty elastic. All right, let's talk plastic. Plasticity, keyword here is deforms. So it will permanently change shape when force is applied. Great example, Mr. Diet Coke, can. Here, rubber band, good non-example. You see these guys here are sort of opposites of each other just like the two green guys are. So if I smash this, it doesn't have it has pretty good plasticity. It's flexible. It takes the shape of me squeezing it, okay? Not so Mr. Rubber Band. It is not very plastic. It is did not permanently change shape. It always elastically bounces back. Okay. Now I shop folks with part 1. You're halfway through. Now you can go ahead and move to the second um, video and we'll finish up our notes.